A domestic car catches fire encounters domestic fire brigade. Water hose breaks twice. Gawa Motors halts production for six months. January wages to be paid by end of February. Study abroad trend cools down. Why aren't Chinese students going overseas anymore? Kaijing, market rescue requires real money. Dissatisfaction with Xi? It's all covered in today's China Truths. A domestic car catches fire encounters domestic fire brigade. Water hose breaks twice. Recently, a video has been circulating online showing what appears to be a domestically produced electric car catching fire on the side of the street, flames blazing and thick smoke billowing. Nearby, a fire truck is parked, firefighters busy preparing to extinguish the fire. First, firefighters pull out a long water hose, with one firefighter holding the nozzle at the end of the hose, ready to spray water to extinguish the fire. However, as soon as the fire truck's water tap is turned on, the connection between the hose and the tap breaks, and water gushes out onto the ground. Firefighters quickly shut off the water tap and reconnected the hose. Once again, when they turn on the tap, the water flows for about 10 meters along the hose before the connection between the two hoses breaks again. Firefighters are forced to once again shut off the water tap and reconnect the hoses. This time, water finally sprays out from the nozzle. By this time, the electric car has been burning for some time, and flames on the roof are barely visible. When sharing the video, netizens caption it, Domestic car catches fire, encounters domestic fire brigade, perfectly leading the way. Some netizens commented, In the 1980s, I often went in and out of military camps, lived next to a fire brigade, befriended several fire brigade officers, and really understood those communist bandits. Using water to extinguish electric car fires is ineffective. It might even cause injuries to firefighters due to electric leakage. Additionally, the quality of your country's firefighters is truly worrying. I really doubt whether these people have been trained at all. The frequent occurrence of fires in domestically produced electric cars, strongly supported by the Chinese Communist Party, is constantly depicted in videos on social media. However, due to suppression by the Chinese Communist Party, there is very little media coverage on this issue. Gawa Motors halts production for six months, January wages to be paid by end of February. It is rumored that Gawa Automobile will suspend production for half a year, and January wages will be paid at the end of February. Jamian News reported on February 19 that Gawa Automobile held an internal meeting on the 18th and announced a six-month suspension of production starting immediately. Insiders said that Gawa Automobile mentioned that employees' wages before February 18 would be paid as usual, employees who remain at Gawa Automobile before March 15 will only receive basic wages, after March 15, employees will only receive basic wages. It is reported that Gawa Automobile pays wages on the 15th of every month. Gawa Automobile did not respond to rumors of a six-month suspension of production. Previously, Gawa Automobile held an all-staff meeting and announced the postponement of January wages, cancellation of the year-end bonus, and salary reduction for all employees. January wages will be paid by the end of February. Regarding the aforementioned rumors, Blue Whale Finance reported that Gawa Automobile confirmed their validity and stated that, based on the actual situation of production and operations, the company is taking adjustment measures such as proactive salary reductions and delayed salary payments for senior executives to face internal and external challenges. The latest news also points to problems in Gawa's operating conditions. Due to a shortage of funds, Gawa may not be able to compensate for layoffs and has to initiate salary cuts to achieve the purpose of disguised layoffs. Gawa Automobile is a high-end smart electric vehicle brand owned by Human Horizons. It was released in July 2019. Its positioning is to create a benchmark brand for global luxury electric vehicle companies. The company disclosed that its team size exceeds 5,000 people and has more than 17,000 high-end users. The founder, Ding Lei, was the general manager of Shanghai General Motors Company, Limited, and the vice president of SAIC Motor, and has many years of experience in the automotive industry. Gawa Auto is facing challenges, particularly in sales performance, as indicated by its official account reporting modest figures for its Gawa Hi-Fi Y model compared to competitors. Despite efforts to maintain operations, the company has resorted to layoffs and restructuring, 
with some departments experiencing significant reductions in workforce. Reports from internal sources confirm these layoffs, highlighting a restructuring trend within the company. Moreover, Gawa Auto's internal troubles are compounded by external financial issues, including rumors of payment delays to suppliers. This has led to strained relations with key suppliers, with some withholding services until outstanding debts are settled. Analysts attribute Gawa's financial struggles to its narrow financing channels, primarily reliant on state-owned investment and financing institutions. In 2023, China's new energy vehicle market will be involved in a price war, followed by roll products, roll technology, roll prices, and the upstream and downstream of the roll industry chain. Already, new car-making forces have collapsed on the eve of the finals, including WM Motor, which has closed its shop and has ceased production, Iways, which has owed wages, and Tianji Motors, whose assets have been frozen. Many brokerage analysts said that price wars and involution will continue in 2024. Study abroad trend cools down. Why aren't Chinese students going overseas anymore? Studying abroad was once a path for many Chinese students to pursue high-paying jobs. However, in recent years, influenced by factors such as the pandemic, the economy, and international relations, the trend of studying abroad has rapidly cooled. Currently, the employment situation in China is severe, and students studying abroad also face the dilemma of returning home and possibly becoming unemployed. Some domestic university graduates, finding it difficult to secure jobs, have even opted to enroll in vocational schools to acquire specific skills for employment. Recently, Chen Jiwen, executive director of the China Association for International Education Exchange, released a research report stating that the number of students studying abroad from prestigious science and engineering universities such as Tsinghua University, University of Science and Technology of China, Xi'an Jiaodong University, and Beihang University has drastically declined, with a decrease of up to two-thirds. Data from the United States shows that the number of students studying in the U.S. reached a 40-year high in 2023, reaching 1.057 million. The number of students from China has declined for four consecutive years, now numbering less than 290,000. Meanwhile, during the same period, the number of Indian students studying in the U.S. increased by 35%. The proportion of undergraduate and master's graduates from Tsinghua University, the top university in China, going abroad for further studies has decreased from 15.3% in 2019 to 8% in 2023. Before the pandemic, 70% of students studying abroad went to the United States, but now it's only 50%. In other major destination countries for studying abroad such as the United Kingdom and Canada, China is also losing its position as the top source of international students. Li Yuanhua, a historian living in Australia, highlights a significant decline in the proportion of Chinese students going abroad for high-tech sensitive professions, particularly to the United States. This decline is attributed to increased caution from the U.S. government due to concerns about technology theft and espionage, as well as policies implemented under former President Trump's administration. Similar restrictions on Chinese students have been observed in countries like the United Kingdom, Germany, and Japan. Xie Tian, a professor at the University of South Carolina, explains that besides geopolitical tensions, economic factors also play a role. High inflation rates in developed countries like the U.S. have made studying abroad increasingly costly, while economic challenges in China have made it harder for families to afford overseas education. The employment situation in China further complicates matters, with returning students facing tough job prospects amid shrinking opportunities. As a result, many opt to pursue postgraduate studies, with a significant proportion of graduates from top universities choosing to continue their education rather than enter the workforce. Among the 2023 graduates of Tsinghua University and Peking University, as many as 81% and 78% respectively continued their studies for advanced degrees. This proportion is also over 70% among the graduates of prestigious universities such as Fudan University, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and the University of Science and Technology of China. 
Moreover, some graduates are turning to vocational schools in hopes of improving their employment prospects, reflecting a broader trend of re-evaluating the value of higher education and the demand for skilled workers versus traditional university degrees. Xie Tian said, China has actually promoted many vocational schools to university status. Universities have inflated somewhat, and the actual need for skilled workers and professional engineers is currently insufficient. This is the result of the inflation of the education system, causing a decrease in real value, and the adverse effects of the great leap forward in education. In addition, a recruitment agency revealed to Voice of America that the starting salaries of graduates from top-ranked universities have plummeted from over 10,000 yuan, approximately 1,400 US dollars, before the pandemic to 6,000 to 7,000 yuan, around 830 to 970 US dollars. And there is also a lack of demand for overseas returnees among employers. Kaijing, market rescue requires real money, dissatisfaction with Xi. Before the Chinese New Year, the Chinese stock market plummeted to 2,643 points, causing widespread distress. Previously, Kaijing had published an article stating that saving the market requires real money. Analysts believe this is a way for different interest groups to express discontent and challenge the status quo. The article in Kaijing, titled Saving the Market Requires Real Money, Cannot Rely on Postponing IPOs, suggests that if there is insufficient capital in the market, regulatory agencies should take measures such as reducing the amount of financing companies can raise on the stock market, shrinking the scale of refinancing for listed companies, and increasing efforts to delist A-share companies. It emphasizes the need for real money to save the market. In February 18, political and economic commentator Qin Ping told the Epoch Times that behind the issuance of stocks, there are large interest groups, and the powerful figures of the CCP are the real power behind the listed companies. However, the CCP authorities have messed up the economy, worsened international relations, and this deterioration cannot be reversed, so they are very dissatisfied. Therefore, they express their dissatisfaction with the CCP through the stock market and economy, which is undoubtedly clear. Regarding some suggestions made in the article, Qin Ping believes that the viewpoints presented by the contributors are reasonable, but they express different opinions on how to boost the stock market, as it involves touching the cheese of quite a few interest groups. Qin Peng quoted sources within the industry as saying that after Wu Qing took over as chairman of the China Securities Regulatory Commission, Investigations into 800 companies waiting to be listed were initiated one by one. This is also a way to reduce capital outflows from the stock market, which naturally touches on the interests of certain groups. In addition to Kaijing questioning the CCP's actions, another publication, Tsaixin, which is also in the same series, has recently issued a series of editorials calling for the abandonment of the GDP competition and rebuilding confidence. Founded by Hu Shuli in 1998, Kaijing is now under the Tsaixin Media Group. Currently, Wang Boming serves as both the editor in chief and president. Wang Boming graduated from Columbia University with a major in international finance and previously worked at the New York Stock Exchange. Wang Boming is a princeling of the CCP. His father, Wang Bingnan, has held positions such as deputy minister of the CCP's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His brother, Wang Dongming, is a senior economist who has served as chairman of Citic Securities Company, LTD. Before Chinese New Year, Shanghai Composite Index closed at 2,865.90 points on February 8, above the five-day moving average. Market closed from February 9 to February 17, reopening on February 19. The index rose for three consecutive days before New Year's with a 5% weekly increase, driven by government-backed funds entering the ETF market, notably the Southern Funds ETF. Data shows a net inflow of 17 billion yuan, approximately 2.4 billion US dollars, in four days since February 5, with total assets quadrupling. Goldman Sachs' report reveals institutions holding about 3 trillion yuan, around 420 billion US dollars, of Chinese stocks and ETFs, approximately 4% of domestic market value, indicating substantial government intervention. These phenomena indicate that the CCP government is putting out real money to save the market. 
Despite these efforts, market experts like Redmond Wong remain cautious, questioning whether government injections can fully restore market confidence. Internationally, the lack of confidence in the future development of the Chinese economy has led to skepticism, with MSCI removing 66 Chinese companies from its China index on February 12, signaling concerns about risky investments. The international market's skepticism towards China is partly attributed to the CCP's departure from market principles and economic management. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.